This year will be my fourth year for growing in grow bags. I've had a lot of new people subscribe to my channel in that amount of time, so I thought it was time to talk about the bags again. If you're wondering about those forks, it's to keep cats from walking in the bags or lying down in the bags. This year I started out with some spring crops by growing spinach, lettuce, and radishes, and then I'll switch over to some summer crops and get two crops out of each bag. A few other things that I've grown in our grow bags include potatoes, sweet potatoes, peppers, tomatoes, squash, cilantro, and Swiss chard. You can grow just about anything in a grow bag that you can grow in the ground, but if it needs support in the ground, it's going to need support in the grow bag, and some things like sweet potatoes and vining crops will end up growing over the sides and end up on the ground anyway. When I first thought of buying some grow bags, the first thing I wondered about was how durable they would be, especially the handles. And as you can see, even in the fourth year, I'm able to lift this grow bag full of soil off the ground, and the handles hold up just fine. Now let's take a closer look at one of the bags. The type that I'm using is a thickened, non-woven, BPA-free fabric. I was concerned that the bottom would rot out or the seam at the bottom would rot out, but so far they show no signs of doing that. The neat thing about fabric pots is that they air prune the roots of your plant. If you've ever grown a plant in a container and then repotted it, you've seen those roots that circle around the hard container. Well, that doesn't happen in fabric pots or grow bags. If you're wondering about the size of this grow bag, it's a 25 gallon. It takes a lot of soil to fill a 25 gallon grow bag, but they also come in one gallon up to 100 gallons. With some plants, the roots will grow all the way to the bottom of the grow bag and even penetrate a little bit, especially at the seams. This leftover root was from some sweet potatoes that I grew in this bag, and some small potatoes even formed below the bag in the ground. Let's take a look at that. I doubt we'll have a whole lot in here, but it might be interesting to see what we have. Well, that's pretty soft dirt. Okay, there's a little red garnet. We got some more roots here. <coughs> I'm not sure if they've got any more potatoes on the end of them. Let's see what this little purple Molokai is. That was just a root starting to form, that's all that is. Now let's take a closer look at one of the handles. As you can see, they're well stitched and none of the stitching is starting to fray yet. And when you look on the inside, you see that there's another piece of fabric that's uh, kind of meant to be a reinforcement for the handles. Then on the side of each bag is one seam and as you can see, it's held up very well too. Since new soil can be expensive, at the end of the season, I dump our grow bags into a pile and then reuse it the next year. In order to make the soil better to grow in, I add a few things. Here I have some new soil, some peat moss, and some used soil. And I mix that all together and then I add some fertilizer. Uh, I have a video on the subject and I'll show you the exact formula I used in this mix. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link below. Once I have my soil mixed up and ready to go, I load a wheelbarrow and then take the soil over to where the grow bag is going to be in the garden and fill it there. It's much easier to do it that way instead of trying to carry a grow bag full of soil. This year, since we were in the middle of a pandemic while I was planting my garden, I rejuvenated the soil simply by adding fertilizer instead of mixing other ingredients. I've grown several different types of regular potatoes with mixed results, and I do think it takes more water to grow in grow bags than in the ground. I've also grown four or five different varieties of sweet potatoes in grow bags, and most of those have done very well. The variety you're looking at here is called Yellow Jersey, and that's a very old variety. Once the season is over, 
I simply empty the grow bags into the pile I showed you before. Then I make sure that the grow bags are completely dry before I hang them up in our shed. Then they stay there until the next spring. If you've ever used grow bags, let us know what you think about them down in the comments section. Don't forget to like and share, and if you're just now finding this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. We'll see you next time.